it is now time to look at dynamic stability. We can then apply what we learn to a study of longitudinal dynamic stability. We will first consider a type of dynamic stability called subsidence. This is not operationally possible for an aeroplane. The vertical axis is displacement from equilibrium and the horizontal axis is time. The red dot represents an aeroplane in equilibrium. The red dot is displaced from equilibrium and when the disturbing force is removed, the initial reaction is to start to move back towards equilibrium. This illustrates positive static stability. And over a period of time, the dot returns to equilibrium. This illustrates positive dynamic stability. Let's reset the graph and reintroduce the ball in the bowl. Displacement takes place. The disturbing force is removed and an initial return towards equilibrium begins. Over a period of time, a return to equilibrium takes place. We have an illustration of positive static and positive dynamic stability. How is it possible for the ball to gently return to equilibrium with no oscillations? Damping. If the bowl is full of a viscous substance, such as syrup, the ball might act as illustrated. Now we will consider another type of dynamic stability, called divergence. The red dot is displaced from equilibrium, and when the disturbing force is removed, the initial reaction is to start to move further away from equilibrium. This illustrates negative static stability. And over a period of time, the dot continues to move away from equilibrium. This illustrates negative dynamic stability. We have a negative static and negative dynamic stability. Let's reset the graph and include the ball in the bowl. Displacement takes place. The disturbing force is removed and the initial movement away from equilibrium begins. Over a period of time, a further movement from equilibrium takes place. An illustration of negative static and negative dynamic stability. Let's have a look at neutral dynamic stability. The red dot is displaced from equilibrium and when the disturbing force is removed, the initial reaction is to stay displaced from equilibrium. This illustrates neutral static stability. And over a period of time, the dot continues to stay equally displaced from equilibrium. This illustrates neutral dynamic stability. We have neutral static and neutral dynamic stability. Another type of dynamic stability is called damped oscillation. The red dot is displaced from equilibrium and when the disturbing force is removed, the initial reaction is to start back towards equilibrium. This illustrates positive static stability. And over a period of time, the dot continues to move back to equilibrium with several oscillations. This illustrates positive dynamic stability. We have positive static and positive dynamic stability. Let's reset the graph and include the ball in the bowl. Displacement takes place. The disturbing force is removed and the initial movement back towards equilibrium begins. Over a period of time, with several reducing oscillations through equilibrium, a return to equilibrium takes place. An illustration of positive static and positive dynamic stability. This is the ideal type of stability for an aeroplane. But in reality, 
it is not quite so good as illustrated. This next type of dynamic stability is called undamped oscillation. The red dot is displaced from equilibrium and when the disturbing force is removed, the initial reaction is to start back towards equilibrium. This illustrates positive static stability. And over a period of time, the dot continues to oscillate through equilibrium with no reduction. This illustrates neutral dynamic stability. We have positive static and neutral dynamic stability. Let's reset the graph and include the ball in the bowl. Displacement takes place. The disturbing force is removed and the initial movement back towards equilibrium begins. Over a period of time, there is continuous oscillation through equilibrium with no damping of motion. An illustration of positive static and neutral dynamic stability. Clearly, energy is being added for this to occur. The final type of dynamic stability is called divergent oscillation. The red dot is displaced from equilibrium and when the disturbing force is removed, the initial reaction is to start back towards equilibrium. This illustrates positive static stability. But over a period of time, the dot continues to oscillate through equilibrium with an increase in displacement. This illustrates negative dynamic stability. We have positive static and negative dynamic stability. Let's reset the graph and include the ball in the bowl. Displacement takes place. The disturbing force is removed and the initial movement back towards equilibrium begins. But now, over a period of time, there is increasing oscillation through equilibrium. The only way this can occur is for energy to be added. The energy usually comes from the pilot trying to damp out the motion, but out of phase with it, making it worse instead of better. This is called pilot-induced oscillation. All aircraft must demonstrate the required amount of static and dynamic stability. If the aircraft were allowed to have static instability with a rapid rate of divergence, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to fly. Longitudinal dynamic stability concerns the variation of displacement with time following a disturbance. Longitudinal dynamic stability consists of two basic types of oscillation. Long period oscillation, the fugoid, and short period oscillation. We will consider the long period oscillation, the fugoid, first. The fugoid is a gradual interchange of potential and kinetic energy about some equilibrium airspeed and altitude. The period of oscillation is between 1 and 2 minutes, so is easily controlled by the pilot. There are changes in altitude, attitude and airspeed, but there is no significant change in angle of attack. Damping in the fugoid is weak. Short period motion consists of rapid pitch oscillations, during which the aeroplane is constantly restored towards equilibrium by its static stability and the displacement being decreased by pitch damping. So flying at high altitude will tend to reduce dynamic stability due to the reduction in aerodynamic damping. Short period oscillation involves rapid and significant changes in angle of attack, load factor, so can generate damaging flight loads to the aircraft structure. 
there is no significant change in altitude, attitude or airspeed. The period of motion of 1 to 2 seconds is close to the normal pilot response lag time. There is the possibility that an attempt by the pilot to forcibly dampen oscillation may make it worse and produce instability. This concludes our study of longitudinal stability. We will consider directional stability and lateral stability next.